Evil, what's up? How are you doing, man? How are you doing in this fine, fine evening? I have just received this Tada or Tada, I don't know how it is pronounced. And <clears throat> this is for a um, friend of mine called João, which mo which closest English translation I believe is John. So John, he uh, ordered the uh, Tada parts and sent it to me so I could build it on stream. The Tada is a very very nice keyboard. Uh, for beginners, for a first build, it's a very nice 65%. Uh, the one we are going to build today has a plastic case. This is exactly how it was sent to me by KBE fans. I haven't opened it before, just to check. I just ripped the, uh, the mailing boxes and What's really nice about this case is that you can buy it and then you can um, upgrade to a aluminum case once you feel like it. Also, the plastic case is very nice. Uh, I think it's very pretty. The only thing though that generally has a problem with these Tada cases is this... Tokyo, what's up? How are you doing? So I was saying that uh, the Tada case uh, generally has just a small problem, which is this injection point here. I don't know if you guys can see it. It should be glossy. Uh, like the whole chat is supposed to have a um, matte finish, kind of. This part here is where the injection, plastic injection point is. And it's all, um, how can I say this? Um, dented or whatever so uh, it just happens when you look at the back of it uh, the nice thing that is that they send rubber feet too so the rubber feet are quite nice I have this big lamp here next to me because the last time I streamed from my phone the front camera was kind of dark so I have this um, this front uh, this lamp here with me it's kind of way too bright so if you guys can't see or if the lighting is not okay we can you know move things around maybe it was designed for a sticker or such yeah that was a, what, what I was thinking though um, I think you know what I, what I what I think would be nice would be if I developed uh, Ekron stickers to put on these kinds of things it would be nice I'm gonna start to think about that that's that's it's a really nice idea anyways Tadakes. Here we have the rubber feet and the screws. This is exactly how it came to me by KB Defense. Very well packed as always. KB Defense is a very nice place, not sponsored in any way, to buy your keyboards. Um, the steps, uh, I don't believe these are cherry. Uh, I did ask for genuine cherry, but uh, I think that the uh, default ones are not. Those are plain plate mounted and I'm going to lube them today. Uh, also, the PCB on the plate came in this uh, other box here. So we have the plate, very nice plate, very strong, very well built steel plate. The only problem that I have with this plate is this: uh, is that like in the front part, it's all so smooth and nice and it's shiny. On the back part though, there are some really sharp edges, especially on the cuts here. I believe it's because of the cutting uh, technique that they use. I don't know how it is called in English. In Portuguese, it's called martelagem. That they have this um, this template that they you know force brute into a steel sheet, and it gets this pattern, which is why I think there are um, 
which uh, I think there are these uh, sharp edges here, but very cheap, very nice quality stuff. Really like this, really liking it. It fits perfectly onto the case. Awesome. The PCB. Myself, as a PCB designer, I think that the uh, KB Defense PCBs could be better designed. Um, I don't like how they look. Uh, their construction and their quality is good. They shoot, they work, they are amazing. I don't like how they look. Uh, but quality wise, they are awesome. The cuts, the uh, I don't like that they use generally use hedged uh, copper pores, but oh well, people like it, so I'm not. Uh, so, oh well, oh yeah. So this is, uh, I don't know which PCB this is, they don't have a name, but this is the stock PCB that comes with the Tada. It has the stencing, I believe, thank you. Gustavo Teixeira, salve, salve. Tudo bem? This is the Mini B uh, uh, version. Uh, the, I think that for this PCB there, is, there isn't a um, USB-C version. The case itself is made for USB Mini. So yeah, the whole thing comes together pretty nicely. Awesome. No issues whatsoever. Um, I will also build this with a um, DSA Granite that the, the dude he bought from me. The SA Granite was, uh, was using in this keyboard here. This was my daily driver. Uh, I sold him this very same uh, DSA Granite to buy an SA Granite, which I believe is still selling in Kono store. So check that out. Kono stuff, uh, they have some problems here and there, but in general, they tend to be very nice, very nice quality. So again, you guys, be sure to check this, so we'll, I'll be building that guy with uh, these here. Uh, I will have to get some extra keys though, the extra keys are on my um, wardrobe. On my, I don't know how it's called, uh, my thing that uh, I'll get them. Shogunkan, salve gondolindrin, e aí? Tudo bem? Vamos buildar um teclado hoje. Uh, so I believe I did publish the stream on a Brazilian, big Brazilian group and uh, I believe that there are always some Brazilians getting in. Uh, galera, se vocês precisarem de comentários em português, as streams geralmente são em inglês. Tem muita gente internacional, então é stream em inglês. Se vocês precisarem de alguma coisa em português, não entenderem, é só pedir e falar em português. And I will build this with a box, no, not navies, royals. Nice, so nice. Their tactility is amazing. Their feeling is awesome. These are the retooled version, which uh, allegedly uh, don't have that stem problem anymore. Remember that the box V1s did have a stem problem that they would crack um, the stem uh, slots on keycaps. The retooled versions are not supposed to have that. Let's see if that is really the case. So let's get to it. Guys, whenever you get a PCB, the first thing that you should do is test it. Okay, so open it up on a, a keyboard tester website. Uh, we have this uh, inside joke on Mr. Keith's Discord of the Josh. There is this, I don't remember this exact site now, that is a keyboard tester site that says, Josh, Josh, whenever you press a key, you should always test it. I have tested the PCB before and uh, I haven't found problems with it. Uh, I think I will need to reflash this because John did ask for a custom, sorry, John asked for a custom uh, layout. But uh, this PCB works, so be sure to flat to test your PCBs before doing it. Uh, how do you test PCBs? Uh, very easily, you get a pair of pliers, uh, metal contacts, and you short the uh, contacts of each key switch uh, one by one and test if they work. If any uh, of them is defective or faulty, um, 
you either flashed it wrong or, um, well, the PCB is defective. Also try flashing it, okay? Let's do it. So, first of all, wait. So, plate fits nicely. So, what is up guys? How have you guys been doing? I forgot that this PCB is has north facing LEDs. Hello Dago, what's up? What were you doing man? Let's build this PCB. Finally managed to get signal. Oh, the old school signal. Cell phone signal game. Sucks. Okay. Not right quite there yet. Okay, okay. So everything aligns up nicely. Okay, so the plate here for me looks like it's pretty straight. The PCB is curved, so the PCB has a little flex to it. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but at least for me, clearly there is a curve down here. Well, whilst the uh, plate is pretty straight. Um, there's not much trouble uh, with PCB when that happens with the PCB. There is trouble when that happens with the plate. When the plate is, um, when the plate has, has some curve and flex to it, I mean, when it's bent, mm, it's, 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 it's rather a problem because then it won't fit okay in the case, especially when you are talking uh, metal cases. When the PCB has a flex, the, 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 the plate will straighten it up when you solder it. So there's no problem there. The only issue that we would uh, have to take really care is when soldering switches. So when you are soldering a switch, let me put a switch right on the worst part, worst, uh, the most bent part here. Okay, so uh, on the very bent part, I don't know if you guys can see, the, the, the switch won't sit right flush to the PCB. So um, you have to, whenever you are uh, soldering it, you have to press it gently and solder it while pressed so that you are sure that the switch is flush to the PCB. That's just a small problem. So this is how it looks when you don't press it. Let me, okay. So see, you have quite a big gap there. So you have to be sure to solder it while pressing the thing so that you solder it flush. Uh, is it possible, let me see. Is it possible to paint a plate like spray painting? Um, yes, it is. Uh, this is stainless steel. So uh, there are quite a lot of paints that you could use. I have never tried it though. The thing is, um, the plate, after you put, uh, I'm going to show you, but after you put the, um, the keycaps on, the plate is pretty much under the keycap, so you don't see it. So the plate color is not that important. But yeah, you can paint it. There are, all, there are also some uh, vendors that, um, that, uh, that sell colored plates, anodized plates. Um, for example, um, Steven sells shark plates, shark PCB, right, shells shark plates, which is my design for anyone that doesn't know, a PCB, a plate, a case that I designed. He sells those plates colored. Uh, I think he's opened a GP uh, some days ago. That's not commonplace though. Uh, most vendors sell uh, uncolored plates. Both brass and aluminum, stainless steel is not quite commonplace. Any more questions? Let's say, 
Dang, someone on the liver service bent it, maybe. Nope, mm, this is quite common with PCBs. Uh, especially long PCBs, 70 TKLs and 75%, it's, it's pretty common for them to come bent. Um, nothing much you can do there, actually. Um, this is pretty common with PCBs and it doesn't affect the whole thing um, in any way, shape or form. Of course, if the PCB is way too bent, maybe but i have never seen that case but slightly bent as it is here it's it's pretty common uh so you don't have uh to worry about that then again the problem would be if the plane if the plate was uh, bent if the plate was bent then that would be a problem because the big uh, uh, a bent plate can mess up with the switch alignment so the the final keyboard when you're uh, uh, typing on it the switches can have different heights and it's you know it's it's a not nice feeling to uh, you, you change your action points uh, uh, so it's not good but the, the plate here looks pretty okay no no bending on the plate whatsoever so no issues show them the PCE when you get it to be a nice example of surface needing treatment okay the, the I think that the Ys will come to me tomorrow so maybe I'll stream it no problem uh, the new one asks, have you ever tried a carbon fiber plate? Yes, I have. Pretty nice material. Um, I really like it, the sound profile that it has. I really recommend that you guys try it. Um, KBD fans, if I remember correctly, sells uh, plates, uh, carbon fiber plates for universal 60%. Really awesome stuff and it's not, uh, I think it's if I remember correctly, it's the same price as um, it's the same price as common uh, your common um, uh, aluminum stainless steel plates. So when uh, when you weld the switches in, will it come back normal? Um, okay, so I have to press it. See, I have to give it a gentle press so that I make sure that the switch is flush with the PCB, and then I solder it while a little bit pressed. Um, so yes, it comes back to normal, no problem, because the plate straightens the PCB up. The PCB is not a very hard material, it's quite flexible actually. So the, 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 the plate, which is a harder material, will make sure that the whole thing is straight. Uh, so Dallas says, I have, had, I have had experience with that, switches in different levels. You are tapping your right and suddenly hit upon the Mount Everest and feel like scrap. Yes, that's a problem. Uh, uh, it doesn't actually change the actuation point of the switches because that changes on the switches. But the, since it has different, it has different heights on the keys. It changes your perception of the uh, actuation points, and it's not good. It's really not good. It's a very, very bad feeling. So always, guys, make sure to uh, give a gentle press on your PCB to make sure that it's flush. The switches are flush to the PCB. First of all, though, we will install the steps. The steps are plate mounted, so we'll install them first. I will remove those uh, switches here, just for this. Also, I have a uh, I have an aluminum pada case that I can show you guys. This is an aluminum case, tada. This one has bent blacks on it. Uh, it's quite heavy. See, aluminum, really nice. So th the nice thing is that you can easily unscrew the whole kit from the plastic case and just screw it on the aluminum case. And it feels, it's, it's the same thing, same mounting points. Everything's the same, so it's quite nice. The aluminum case has this amazing quality for the price. KBD fans, man, KBD fans. I don't know how Wade does it, but really nice thing. Luan Gatão. Oi, Gondo. E aí, beleza? Ele não é BR, rei de burro. BR, opa, o erro é BR. João aqui dando um teclado. E aí, cara, beleza? Tá aqui, ó. Vamos montar hoje, velho. Vamos montar hoje. Vamos lá, vamos montar esses plates primeiro. Bom, well, first let me get the uh, plate loop, the screws, screws, the steps loop. Where 
is it here? So for the steps, for looping the steps, I will use a dielectric grease, uh, which I believe is made of silicone, uh, graxa de silicone in uh, Portuguese. Let's do it. O uh, Alexandre Telles, salve, salve. E aí, vamos montar um custom hoje? So, de novo, galera, é, a stream é em inglês, porque tem muita gente internacional, mas o que vocês precisarem em português eu respondo sem problema, tá? So, the steps are here. Plate mount steps, nice stuff. Uh, these, however, I will have to clip them, though. Yes, they do come unclipped, so let me get the wires to clip them. Bom, pra galera BR que não tá entendendo, é o seguinte, ó. Isso aqui é um plate, tá? É uma plate onde vão as switches, eu já vou mostrar pra vocês. Esses aqui são os estabilizadores. Os estabilizadores são essas uh, uh, fios aqui, que vão nas, nas teclas grandes para você distribuir o peso nessas teclas. O que, que eu vou fazer agora? Eu vou lubrificar uh, essas peças de metal para remover o barulho metálico que elas fazem e para deixar um, 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 uma sensação mais legal. Nessas teclas, é o que eu vou fazer agora. Ok, so let's lube it. Uh, first of all, we have to mount the top part of the steps on their, on their place. Screwed it up. Did I? Okay, no, I didn't. These plate mounted steps though, they are quite problematic sometimes, really hard to mount them. Oh, it's raining, awesome. It's very hot. What the fuck? It's very hot around here these days, so rain is always welcome. So rain is always welcome. Uh, I had a very dumb idea now. Fala, você responde e tira dúvidas? Claro, mandei. Imagine a keyboard which is case is entirely covered in whatever tissue cat car seats are made of. Yeah, that's a bad idea. That's a really bad idea. I mean, I have two, I have those two sometimes. But come on, Dado. I really forgot how to mount these steps, though. Yep. Does anyone there remember exactly how to mount plate mounted steps? 
because I think that I forgot and it's giving the card a quite a hard time. What do you think of carbon, carbon fiber plates? Awesome material, really good material. I think that everyone should try it at least uh, one time. Um, uh, also, if I remember correctly, uh, KBD fans sells um, carbon fiber plates for your common universal 60% uh, cases. So it's, it's, it's not, uh, they're not, um, they are not expensive. Really recommend it if you can. Uh, if you can try them, by all means do because they are amazing. Okay, so here it is. I forgot to clip it though. Let me clip it. Então, galera, para os estabilizadores, ele tem essas pecinhas móveis aqui, acontece assim, ó. Isso aqui vai montado na plate. Não sei se vocês conseguem ver, não sei se a luz está deixando também. Esse aqui vai montado na plate. Esse cara vai dentro aqui, inclusive tem a cruzinha da, da, da Kiket aqui. Aí ele vai dentro. E essa aqui é a parte móvel. Aí esse fio vai montado aqui dentro e ele que distribui o peso, ele que mexe pela tecla. Então é isso que eu estou fazendo agora. Só que essas pecinhas pequenininhas de cruzinhas, elas têm que ser cortadas. Elas têm uma perninha, que aqui é a perninha de cima aqui, que tem que ser cortada. A gente chama de clipping, clipar. So, let's clip this. Clipped. One more. Clipped. So, ok. You there, and you there. Okay, awesome. Now let's lube and insert the wire. Aí eu vou usar esse lubrificante, é uma graxa de elétrica, graxa de silicone, na verdade. E a lubrificação, ela é... Como que eu posso descrever? Generosa. So, here it is, and here it is. Awesome. That's mounted. Something tells me that I should have inserted the wires before doing that. Should I? I think I should, yep. Second one, which should be you. Okay. okay, so this one feels kind of wonky. I think mm -hmm. I inserted it the wrong side. Let's see. 
Is this the one? Yes, it is. Awesome. So, here it is. Loot and twit. Now we insert it. Okay, okay, awesome, so the first stab is in, three more to go. Gotta go, I'll be back in half an hour, we'll wait for ya. Uh, will you bandage loop the PCB? No, I won't. Uh, these, since these steps, they are not PCB mounted, uh, the Band-Aid mod cannot be done here on these steps. Sorry, since these uh, uh, steps are plate mounted, not PCB mounted, the Band-Aid mod doesn't work here, right? Uh, for general lubing on a keyboard, what do you recommend this grease? Yeah, this grease is pretty much good. Uh, the only problem with this grease is that uh, it's pretty inconsistent across the brands. So you have to, good, to get a good brand. This brand, Implastec, is a nice Brazilian um, chemical compounds brand. Uh, I really like it. I really use it for steps. For uh, switches, uh, we it depends on the type of switch and depends on the viscosity of the lube. It depends on what you like. But the two more, the two most used ones are Tribosis 3204 and uh, 205, especially the grade zero one. These you can easily get through MacMarket and there are also lots of vendors that uh, sell them. Uh, I get mine from switchmod.net. Um, there are also the Chrysler Loops, PTFE, there are lots of loops you can use. For stabs, you can use these ones. There is also Super Lube, which is also good, but it's very, it, it's pretty much more expensive than this one and it works just the same. Uh, for general styles verification, this grease, yep, so as new said it. I'm thinking on buying a GT61 and read that these steps aren't so good when not looped. Yeah, uh, if you want good steps, you should get uh, genuine and cherry steps. Those are the default ones. As of late, they have retooled the steps and the new ones are not so great, but anyways. Genuine steps are the uh, are the default ones. They are quite pricey for Brazilians. They are a, a, a set of genuine steps are like thirteen dollars or something like that. It's it's pretty expensive for us here. So uh, maybe you will want to get a um, a uh, lube like this. These uh, these. Um, this uh, loop here, you will find it any uh, in any uh, electronics components store. Uh, it's pretty easy to find, pretty cheap, no problems. Gando, which steps do I buy for Austin? You gotta go for the big stuff, man. Zeal steps. Austin is a very high-end keyboard, so Zeal steps. Uh, I I heard that the Everglide ones are awesome too. Um, the Duroc ones I haven't tested, but they really look like the Everglade, the, the um, Everglide ones, so they should be good too. I have a set of Zeal steps here, amazing. I have also a set of EPBT steps here, awesome. Um, genuine chair steps, mm, can't go wrong with these. At least the, the latest, uh, the later, uh, avoid the later batches. Uh, yeah, but you can also get the, you know, Zeal steps, which are the premium, nice quality steps. Salve Gondo, e aí, como vai? So, we are doing the backspace stab now. Okay. Okay, here. Well, let me do this end here. I didn't lube it when I should have. God damn it. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -da. 
Okay, so one of them don't feel nice. I think I didn't put it the right way. Yeah, I messed this one up. Let's see. Okay, looks good. Let's go for this one. Okay, so the, oops, I screwed it up. I fucked it up, I did fuck it up. Crap, 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 crap. Okay, it came in one piece. Let's try redoing this. This plate mount set, they're quite a hassle to do now. Okay, okay, awesome, so. This is the enter step, done. Let's go for the uh, left shift. I believe that there should be another wire. Hello, wait, no, it's here. Okay, awesome. Uh, let's see, more questions, more questions. Uh, uh, all steps are, so the new one says, all steps are better when moved, but I think we need to disassemble them in order to load them properly. I don't know the UK61 kit, uh, the, the one that I bought, the GK61, did come with um, with uh, unassembled stabs, so you could assemble them yourself and loop them yourself. But if it comes with the stabs assembled, then you 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 must uh, disassemble them, and uh, then you must disassemble them and uh, loop them after. But uh, I, if if I remember correctly, the GK61 is a hot swap kit. So it shouldn't be a problem. I don't have to desolder anything to remove these steps because you generally have to desolder stuff. On this kit that I'm going to build today, if you want to remove anything, you will need to desolder the switches and that's not a very pleasant task. This one is also broke. Awesome, let's lube this one too. You have to be very liberal with lube. Um, the grease is pretty, pretty cheap, so yeah, why not? But to achieve that nice, non redly, redly uh, stab, you have to be pretty liberal with those. Okay, last step guys, last step. So, clip. Clip. Okay, so let's go loop. And loop a little bit more. Okay.
dan oh did it oh, wait okay done and done done and let's assemble it Okay, so all steps are in and looped. If you guys can see, backspace, enter, space, sorry, backspace, left shift, enter, and uh, left shift. Okay, so. GK61 is another brand, I don't remember which one now. Otemo Gateron. Um, actually, I will be building, I don't know if that's the question, but I will be building with uh, box royals. So, after I do this, I get my hands all uh, oily, but no, nothing on the plate whatsoever. Let me just wash my hands before doing anything else. Like I'm closing this too. Okay, so now we go to the nice part, which is soldering. Yay! Let me hook up my solder iron. Parece que eu tenho melhorou bastante, mas infelizmente eu ficaram marcado no mercado. Parece bom, vi que ele tem um problema com a mixagem de cores da RGB, caso vem com criação, né? só as cores básicas não tem problema, parece um bom teclado. No idea what they're talking about, but oh, yep, awesome, let them talk. Also, big props there, guys at KVD fans, always very, very attent, affectionate and Paying attention to everything, they did send a um, pair, a like single stab, um, don't know piece. In case I lose one, almost didn't end up. In case I lose one, really awesome. Let me put it here. Okay, let me turn the iron on. We're talking about GK61. Also a nice kit. You can buy it off of Banggood, I believe, which is really easy way to get it into uh, Brazil. Okay, 
Here you are. Here you are. Awesome. While it heats up, let me get the uh, wet sponge. Awesome. Here it is. And the tin. Here it is. A block of tin. Nice and hot. Let me down the temperature a bit. Okay, 330. Awesome. Okay, so the first thing that we could do is to fix the PCB on the plate. Um, I generally uh, solder the four corners first just to make sure everything is aligned and we don't have issues. Always make sure that the pens are not bent because if they are, they won't go through the holes on the PCB and you will have a hard time getting it out. So always make sure that those pins are not bent. Okay, everything looks good. Did I screw it up? No, I didn't. I did? No, I didn't. Didn't I though? Pardon my stupidity, but um Yep, awesome. Awesome. Okay, so four switches, let's solder these four first. And then again, always make sure that the PCB and the, uh, that the switches are really flush to the PCB. And let's do it. Okay, this one is almost there. First one is done. Let's get the second one. I wouldn't go 60% again. Tara is great for the arrow key, 65 is nice enough. Soon I am doing a GB of the arrow 6% that is supported by most keycap base keys. So watch out for that if that's your quarrel with 60%. Uh, Soldering feels like impossible for me. Yeah, soldering is something that takes quite a lot of uh, experience and skill if you want it done right. It's not impossible, you just have to do it many times. I would recommend that you buy one of those soldering learning kits. You can buy them off of like AliExpress, it has tons of them. Very cheap, very nice to do. Uh, you can learn a lot from those. And I really recommend that if you want to get into this, because this hobby requires soldering. Uh, 
hot swap is not commonplace in the MK hobby for some reasons, but uh, so you should learn how to solder and even the solder for that matter. Okay, so let me show you guys. So, this is what you're looking for, okay? So, uh, let me show you. There you go, so, shiny spots, um, shiny connections. I don't know if you guys can see, but um, the camera won't focus. But uh, the soldering spots, they should have this tent uh, uh, curve to them, like this, right? You don't want them a blob, like a round blob, and you also don't want too little solder. Why? If you take too little solder, uh, the, the, the solder joint, the electrical joint that you are doing is not reliable. Also, if you do like a big blob, uh, it's not reliable either, because you can't see if they, uh, um, 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 you know, work joint correctly. So you want that tent uh, shape, because that tent shape tells you that the two metals did adhere correctly and the, the solder uh, joint, the, the electrical joint there is nice. I am done with keeps for now. No, you're not, man. No one's ever done with keeps. Uh, okay, awesome. Okay, so let's go for the rest of them. So. As I do it, I like to avoid the bending. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to solder one right at the most bent place of the PCB because that uh, really corrects the bend, the bending over all the PCB. So, okay. So if you guys can see it, let me show you guys. This is how it looks without forcing. So it's quite clear here that the switch is not aligned to the PCB. You can see that there is this big gap there. So I, what I will do is I will, and this is the trick. You should solder one joint, just one joint. Solder one pad. Okay, so when it is like this, you press it and then you reflow that pad. And then you release. Awesome. See? Now the plate is straightening the PCB. I don't think I have done it. Okay. Awesome. So now. There you see, flush. This is how you want your solder joints. I'm gonna switch. Solder joints, okay, tent shape. No issues there. Looking good. Okay, so now I'm going to input the whole first row. I'm going to solder them serially. Then again, making sure no bent pins so that they go straight into the PCB. This is a very nice view. I should stream more like this. I really like how you guys can see what I'm working on, what I'm doing, and you can see my face. I really like how this setup was done. Then again, a simple lamp, like a, a desk lamp, and uh, my cell phone. Really simple stuff, I really liked it.
Okay, so the first row is in. They snapped right into the plate, no problems. As you guys can see, like, it, it's very um, 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 clear that the, um, the switches and the uh, PCB have a little gap to them, which is not as big now because I did force with the first one. So you should always look for that. Anyways, now that I have soldered uh, a, a switch on the middle, that bend, the difference between the plate and the PCB is not that so that visible anymore. There is still a little bit of bend, but honestly, pretty nice, pretty good looking. The mosquitoes. Okay. Okay, so this part here, awesome. Okay, so the first row is done. Para ver qual o modelo desse ferro de solda, TS100. Yes, TS100. Cheap, nice. You can change the tips very easily with an Allen uh, key. I really love this. This is by far one of the best soldering stations because let's face it, it, it controls temperature. So for every intended purpose of the solder station, one of the best ones that I've ever had. Uh, o profile da Keycap muda no som ou apenas na altura mesmo? Muda. Tá. É, o que, os Keycaps mais altas, uh, como SA e MT3, elas têm mais material, elas são maiores. Uh, então, é, muda, muda bastante o som. Particularmente, eu adoro Keycaps bem altas, porque elas ressoam bastante o som do teclado. Então, o som do teclado fica mais uh, evidente e o fio delas, para mim, o fio delas é melhor. DSA é muito legal também, 
Pra mim, eu não gosto do somzinho dela só, porque o som dela é um pouquinho uh, mais alto, mais é, fino, sabe? Então, muda. Muda bastante o som, sim. Mas eu diria que na, não existe kick-cap com som ruim. Eu diria que isso não existe. Existe kick-cap com som diferente. As várias kick-caps têm sons diferentes. Não existe um profile que eu digo pra você que tem som ruim. O profile que eu mais gosto hoje de som de tudo é XDA. É o melhor que tem. É um profile baixo, legalzinho, reto, uniforme. Não tem erro. Hum... Which 40% board do you recommend? Shark PCB, of course! Why, why would you even ask that? Goddamn Shark PCB, man! Why not go buy one right now? Uh, bom que vai dar pra ver esse switch em ação. Vou comprar eles. Muito bom. Muito bom. Eu já usei esse switch várias vezes. Ele é excelente. No final da build eu vou mostrar pra vocês como que fica. Maravilhoso. Uh, I heard Kyrosen add uh, a say on the ice key with box names. Please try the PC, take some. Yep. Olá, Gondo. Já testou o Gatrão Yellow Ótico? Já! Não gostei. Uh, as suítes óticas Gatrão, elas não são bem feitas, pelo menos as que eu testei, não sei se eles melhoraram ultimamente. Mais ou menos. É mais ou menos. Vamos ver como é que saem as próximas. De novo, eu testei um batch particular, de repente eles melhoraram? Não sei. So, a Gaunter13 is asking if I have ever tried yellow optical Gatlin switches, and I, yes, I have tried. I don't know if they are called that, but it had a yellow stem, it was optical Gatron. I believe that was a yellow optical Gatron, and I didn't like it quite much. I think that the standard yellow Gatrons are still better, at least stock. How can I get a shark? Uh, I believe Steven is still selling sharks. You can buy a base kit, which is a sandwich uh, skeleton mount. Um, on wood cables. Uh, I don't remember the exact site, but I would guess it's woodcables.com. So check it out. I believe the whole kit sells for uh, 52 bucks, which is a PCB, bottom plate, uh, base plate, switch plate, standoff screws, um, USB C, uh, the PCB is USB C, really nice PCB. Of course, I'm, uh, I'm biased, but hey, I did design it to be good. Tell them about the pepinos. No, I won't. Don't, let's not taint the guy. Existem teclados até 2%? Existem. Os nukes. Okay, guys. So, bottom row, you can see that, yeah, the PCB band is still there. There is quite a big gap. So, then again, what we will do is we will have a gently press it, solder one joint. Okay, so we will solder one pad, one solder joint. Okay, so it is soldered, and what we'll do is we will turn it like this. Slightly press it and reflow that solder joint. We'll wait for it to cool down and release. So now the switch and the plate are holding the PCB and uh, you know compensating for that bend. And now you can just bend the other pin as easily. Awesome. Okay, I did put quite too much solder there, but oh well. Okay. Uh, looking forward to the case, though I'll miss the shark design on the bottom. Uh, yeah, the, the shark design on the bottom was something that I did, you know, to ramp up, to, you know, make it look better. Uh, I did, the initial versions of the shark case did have that shark logo on the bottom but it was very difficult to machine on metal, so um, it, it really hefted up the price cost of the case, so not something I can do there, so I removed it. But um, there were some users that used that shark base plate as a, a decor, really nice. Some guy put it inside his, um, his computer Uh, case, his computer, um, I, I believe it's case, his PC case, it looked really amazing, especially because his PC case was 
blue and white and it really matched the colors of the shark plate so it got really nice. What's the purpose of a 2% KB flexing? The memes, trolling, that kind of thing. Love hurts in many ways. Financially is one of them. Tell me about it. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, so now it seems that the PCB bending is not as noticeable, so I'll just uh, quick solder this row. Okay, so this joint too, I added way too much solder. I believe that's not a problem. Okay. Awesome. Nice. So, bottom row complete. Now, what I like to do is I like to solder the switches from one side to another so that I can take a look at the, the switches positioning from the other side and see if the PCB is not bent anymore. Um, it shouldn't be. Uh, as soon as you do this, the PCB will straighten back up on all its levels because the, 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 the bending is generally horizontal like this. You generally don't have a vertical bending like this. So uh, when you do this, generally the PCB is just awesome. You can feel this is a very solid uh, uh, group now, so you shouldn't have any more problems. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place a row and, and solder every row like very quickly. You guys at home, especially the dudes that are doing this first time, uh, take your time soldering because um, it's quite definitive. Desoldering is a very, um, it's not a really nice shenanigan, again, it's not pleasant, and sometimes you can break your PCB, you can lift pads and whatnot, so be very wary of the solder joints, be very wary of the uh, place you solder your switches, because once you do that, uh, uh, you pretty, it's pretty much definitive. So uh, please be, be, be calm and patient there. 
Is there any other way to deal with the echo of the metal keyboard plate when it exists? So there, is, there are um, alternatives. There are people that use a foam between the PCB and the plate. I've heard that that helps. Um, the other way would be uh, if, you are, uh, if your keyboard is a tray mount, you could add uh, um, uh, uh, rubber O-rings on the uh, screw points so that the, that metallic sound doesn't echo as much. You can also always also do that. But in my opinion, the best way to deal with those metallic um, 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 sounds is looping uh, the springs of the switches. Um, the, the most metallic and unpleasant sound uh, from plates generally comes from um, the ping, which we call spring ping. So looping the, the switch springs so that you remove the ping is, in my opinion, the best way to remove that. Okay, done. Next one. Let's see your comments. Uh, <laughs> Busão passando na casa do Conde tem se faz. Yes, I, eu, eu vivo eu vivo do lado de uma rua e tem bastante yes, e tem bastante movimento. I see you're using the trademark 104% solder. Yep. 104% Gondo Seal of Approval. Gondo, você conhece os mouse custom, redução de preço, etc? Confesso que mouses não são minha praia. Mouses custom, como em teclados, não existem. 
de juntar as peças. O que o pessoal faz é pega a mouse ON e customiza. Eu não conheço muito. Eu tenho o meu que eu modifiquei, eu customizei, que é um Proteus Core, mas é, eu não conheço muito, não conheço muito, sinceramente. Eu queria fazer um cabo custom, mas não achei gente nenhum dos cabos para fazer os fios do cabo USB. Eu faço cabo custom. O problema é que está tudo parado em Curitiba desde janeiro. Eu acho que vou ter que comprar mais insumo, tem bastante gente pedindo. Understood, don't have any experience with disassembling switches. It is necessary any specific tool for this? Mm, not per se, although you will find it very, very mm, useful to have one of those switch openers. I think I have one here. Let me see if it is here or inside there. I think it's inside there. The switches themselves, they are not uh, hard to open, but if you want to open 100 of them, you will need uh, something to keep you sane. Where is my opener? This one is from uh, KBD fans. It opens MX style and KL style switches. I believe this was designed by IO3. Really awesome thing. And uh, so you place, so you has these little uh, teeth, I don't know how they're called. You place the switch here, you force the switch, and then it opens the switch up, right? Um, it's not a uh, difficult process to do it without the opener. Uh, I myself have done it many times, but uh, when you want to open 100 of them, uh, it becomes really, really, um, really difficult to do. So I really recommend you get one of these. It's very, very cheap on KBD fans. I believe it's five dollars. Machined aluminum. Um, it has these little uh, magnetic spots here that make the halves. So this is for uh, MX style switches, this is for cable style switches. It has this magnetic pad that make the halves join and I, re I, I really like this one. I really, really like this. I use it quite a lot to lube mine. You will want one of these. You also have uh, 3D models online that can you can download and 3D print. Uh, Keeps printed one to me one time, but I ended up breaking it. Go figure, I'm a moron. So, um, yeah, there are quite a lot. I think that you will need that. Uh, you will also, it will also be advised that you get a very, very fine brush. People will use toothpicks. I really don't recommend you do that because your lubing gets really inconsistent if you use those. Get uh, a very, very fine brush. Those are really not difficult to find. Um, Those are really not difficult to find and um, go for it. O tal da string chegou em menos de um mês. Explica essa. Pois é. Na verdade, pode ser bem sincero. Ele demorou uns 20 dias em Curitiba, mas ele demorou uns 40 para chegar, vai, que é uma coisa completamente normal, né? Infelizmente é o que demora mesmo. Eu tenho, talvez amanhã chegue para mim um pacote que ficou 80 dias em Curitiba. Acontece, cara. É bem assim. A minha artesão, o meu Orochi que está aqui, ficou 4. É muito. É muito. É muito louco como isso acontece, mas isso aí não é problema dos Correios, né? Isso é problema da Receita Federal, que fica parado lá em Curitiba esperando a fiscalização da Receita. Isso acontece. E aí, boa noite. Vou 
Okay. Nice. No more questions? Yep. Esse aí foi 50 dias para chegar. É, foi uma coisa assim. O Packet costuma chegar mais rápido. Foi Packet. Foi Packet que a gente pediu aqui. For the non-Brazilian guys, they're watching and thinking what the hell is going on. Stuff in Brazil takes a lot of time to, you know, ship. Um, this is due to the fact that uh, most international shippings go through a southern city in Brazil called Curitiba. So they come from uh, outside Brazil and they go directly to Curitiba for... Um, I don't know how it's called in English. It's a uh, tax checking. So the you know IRS guys take your package and see how much it's worth and if it's going to be taxed or not and that kind of thing. Uh, and that part of the taxing takes a lot of time. It it just, for example, uh, I have uh, packages that that took 100 days to be uh, to be checked. Um, this particular keyboard took 20 days to be checked. 20 or 30 days. To be checked on the IRS, so it's really um, it really tests your your patience to import stuff to Brazil. Oi, lindão. E aí? Como é que você tá, ceboloso? Uh, mas se tu pegar o Sedex e Packet, ele chega em 20, 40 dias. Não. Não chegam. Esse aqui foi Packet, demorou mais quase dois meses. Coisa da receita, cara. Não é bem assim, não. Uh, não me ignora, lindão. Carme, Portuga. Eu tô respondendo, só tô vendo o chat, eu tô no celular. Calma. Oh yes, I couldn't get a nice one yet, and I opened 90 switches by hand with a screwdriver after 30 got painful. Yeah, you really need those uh, those switch openers, they're really handy. Uh, Mr. Onion is here, yep, Mr. Onion is here. Tenho um Proteus Spectrum, o que você mudou no seu core? Eu, fiquei, eu deixei ele mais pesado, meu core tem quase 150 gramas. Uh, eu tenho uma mão grande, cara. Ô, Megalil, se está em Curitiba desde janeiro, eu tenho uma péssima notícia. Tem um em Curitiba desde 2017. Meu Jesus Cristo. Uh, meu final mouse. Eu... Holy shit, you talk a lot. Uh, oh shit, and I already got mad at 18 days it took in Germany. Desistiu mesmo de fazer o serviço de customs? Até mesmo para a galera de Sanka, tem alguns amigos que estavam interessados em montar em custom. Em Sanka, talvez, pode ser. Se você tiver alguns amigos em Sanka, me pa passa o, o Face para eles que eu, posso, que eu posso fazer, sim. Não tem problema. Heavy mais. Yeah, heavy mais for the win, man. I have big hands. And I really dislike, um, I really dislike light mouses, uh, especially when you need precision on your mouse. I use a very, very low DPI settings and a very heavy mouse. So I have to, you know, uh, move it a lot to, you know, for precision. And I really like it that way. So I generally always make my mice heavier. My Proteus Spectrum now has close to 150 grams, 140 something. Uh, which solder do you use with lead? Uh, yep, I use 64, 6337 solder. Um, solder, you generally don't 
want to look onto the proportions, although generally the 6337 are better than 6040. But uh, the, the, the important thing is to get a good brand. This is, I believe, the best brand in Brazil, which calls Best. Saw the best. And um, for me, it's the best one. We have Vonder, which is also good. But uh, be sure to get a good uh, solder, a good tin. 150, a mão não cansa? Não. Impressionantemente não. Eu gosto, é o jeito que eu uso. Beleza? Última fileira, galera. Uh, gotta have 104% material. Yep. Uh, 104% is the heavenly proportions. Caramba, me livrei do meu espectrum. Minha mão tá cansando dos meus 88 gramas do 305. Acontece. É isso aí. Uh, I only took the upper way to balance. Six, 502 for life. Strong hands. Yep. Sadly, it's a pain in the ass to get lead solder in Germany. I only got a 637 cheap Chinese ones for EU regulations. Yeah, EU has that uh, ROHS regulation, right? Yeah, leaded solder generally is the best quality one. That's that's just how it is. If you uh, get yourself one of these, uh, it's always better. I can, if you if you want, I can send you one of those. This is really cheap. This is 500 grams of solder. This is the best one I have. If you want me to send one to you, no problems. Although, uh, uh, I think at two kilos I can send any packet. I can send you some of these. This one is this one is really good. Falta de zodio, yes. We miss the hatred. Compensa tirar gateron e colocar nos box white no Pro? Não. Deixa gateron, cara. Não mexe. O Pro PCB do Pro é horrível. É baixa qualidade. Sempre dá problema. Deixa quieto. Compra outro teclado, cara. Pra colocar. Uh, um, pra colocar. Eu recomendo um Tadá. Tadá é excelente. Não sei como é que é na Europa. Quanto custa pra trazer e tal. Mas é baratinho, é tranquilo, é boa qualidade. Legal de montar. Sim. Well, uh, guys, unfortunately, I need to leave. Good evening, good streaming build for you, Gondo. Thanks, man. See you next time. Everybody gangsta to the onion starts talking. That's how it is. Okay, let's go for our last row. O que, que eles usam para baratear o anime? <risos> China, cara. Assim, eu não vou falar nada sobre o trabalho escravo, mas as coisas na China geralmente são feitas em grande quantidade. Uh, algumas vezes os materiais de qualidade duvidosa. O One Pro, ele é barateado na base da quantidade. Literalmente, barateado na base da quantidade. A construção é boa. As keycaps são PBT, translúcidas, double shots, se não me engano. A única coisa que eu tenho a reclamar do One Pro é a PCB. A PCB é bem fraquinha. Quando você tenta dessoldar... É, facilmente ela dá problema nos pads e esse tipo de coisa, então sei lá, cara, eu acho que eu acho que a Unipro é um teclado legal pra comprar de primeira, mas depois pra dessoldar esquece, é pra comprar pra deixar como tá got the 1mm 2% kinda Chinese order so good for my next few bits, but thank you for the offer no problems, dude, I really can help you that uh, our OHS regulation on uh, EU is It's, it's really difficult to deal with, but uh, if I can help you in any way whatsoever, no issues.
O meu ban no Mr. Kids termina quando mesmo? Cara, não sei, tem que ver quem te baniu lá, não fui eu. É, tem, que, tem que perguntar com ele. Se eu não me engano, manda um PM pro, pro algum mod que dá uma olhada. Eu dou uma olhada pra você lá depois, me manda um PM. Eu dou uma olhadinha lá, mas você vai ter que falar com quem te baniu, cara, não fui eu. Sour iron so much, a thick home appliance with that broken plastic. If you put it at the right temperature, it will be able to solder plastic as well, which is less silver. Yes, uh, I have done uh, plastic joints with this too because it can do like 200 Celsius, which is amazing. And um, the quality, the, the build quality is nice. You can uh, upgrade the firmware on it too. So I really, really like it. I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm really, really enjoying it. Não consigo mandar mensagem sem estar no Discord em comum E não sei quem baniu hum. Eu vou dar uma olhada pra você, cara Aí eu te mando um PM Mas eu acho que dá pra mandar mensagens Com algum servidor sem, sem ter um servidor em comum, sim Eu dou uma olhadinha lá I want to get a bit for regular solder And use my existing one as a plastic solder only You can buy uh, soldering bits on AliExpress. They're really cheap, no problems at all. You should really do that. Ok, we are set. There we go. Now I will turn this off. Clean it first. Awesome. Turn it off and turn it. Gondo, o que acha do GK61? É um teclado bom de entrada, é um teclado legal de entrada. Eu acho muito legal, cara. Se você tiver a oportunidade de pegar um, eu acho bacana. De novo, não sei como é que é por aí, se é fácil importar e tal. Mas se você tiver a oportunidade, manda ver. Here it is, guys. On the case, I'm going to screw it. To the case now, where are the uh, here? Let me get my uh, Phillips screw, which is not here apparently. Awesome. É caro esse TS100? Não, você encontra no Ali mesmo. Por quanto que eu tinha pago nele? Eu tinha pago um pouco caro, é porque assim, as pontas dele, as pontinhas dele, ele vem com uma só. É, mas você pode comprar mais pontinhas para ele, dependendo do que você vai fazer com ele. Aí, claro, vai custando mais. Eu tinha pago, quanto? 120? 120 ou 130 reais, mas com três pontinhas diferentes. Aí ele custa um pouquinho mais, mas só ele é bem barato. Acho que é 80 mango, um negócio assim. É o mesmo preço que você pagaria por um, por um ferro de solda normal aqui no Brasa. Okay. 
É uma coisa que você pagaria por um ferro de solda aqui no Brasil. Recomendo mesmo, muito bom. Qual é o problema das keycaps Pudding? Nenhum. Elas só são feias, muito feias. Homer D, nem me fale em Homer D, cara. Nem me fale em Homer D. Dudes are talking about Logitech keyboards with those Romer G switches, which are bad, not good switches. Don't guys, please don't get a tada and go on with your life. Here it is. Now I will put the rubber screws, the rubber feet that were provided. Guys, all of this comes in a kit, okay? You can buy all of this in a kit. So you don't have to worry about finding the pieces and whatnot. There we go. Rubber feet. Awesome. Now let's go for the keycaps. Caralho, não tô acreditando que chegou esse teclado. Pois é, cara. Falei pra você que ia chegar. Que ia chegar, eu falei. Eu peguei o Pro Hero. O que você quer dizer com o Pro Hero? Ah, vou aí no Brasil de M4. Ô louco, Portu Portuga, putaço, full putaço. Calma, Joaquim, calma. O maluco vai vir lá de trás dos montes com a metralhadora. Que doidão. Portuga, malucaço.
Você sente diferença de sensor para sensor? Sim, tem diferença. Vamos, repete cinco vezes seguidas. Vivo lixo, pano. Hum. Cara, eu tenho quase certeza que isso é um outro lado, eu vou ficar aqui. Well, look at this, it's turning on. It's turning to be pretty good. These switches are so amazing. Just wrapping it up, guys. Oops, I screwed it up. It's turning pretty good. I think I did lose a screw inside here. Okay, it's off. It's turning pretty good. Now I have only to get some extra switches for the uh, right part. Do it back.
Okay. Let's see. First of all, we need the arrows. So. Looking pretty good. get a better there we go really really nice key I recommend everyone try this at least once because it is awesome very very good keyboard guys I really like it a lot These are the rest of the keycaps. I will ship them for the owner as soon as I can. Como andam os custom low profile? Se, assim, a, a rigor, low profile mesmo, só com aquelas uh, que é o choque, né? Difícil conseguir custom low profile. Mas você pode ter alguns cases que são low profile. What case material is it? This is a plastic one. Um, you can upgrade this to a. Uh, you can upgrade this to a um, aluminum case if you like. You just have to buy the aluminum case, unscrew it, and screw it on. I have one here with the uh, aluminum case. Oof, it's heavy. The aluminum case, I think, is the same mold. It really looks like. The, uh, the plastic one, but you know, this is aluminum. This is an aluminum case with vintage blacks, and um, yeah, it smells pretty good. So, yeah, um, you can just buy the aluminum case and uh, you know, screw it in, no issues whatsoever. Okay, so let's test this beauty, shall we? Was that the Batman keyboard? No, not yet. Not yet. There is a bad battering. Um, there is a battering um, uh, shaped PCB for keyboard, but no. This is not it. Not yet. 
this one out. This is my Lady Driver. Let's see. Where are you taking us? This is my room. This is my room, Iron Maiden. Oh yeah. Okay guys, so let's do a sound test. Shall we? Awesome. So, I'll leave you guys right next to the keyboard and so you guys can really feel and uh, uh, hear the sound. So yeah, there we go, 131 words a minute. I'm doing good. So yeah, this is um, your Tada plastic case, box navies, and uh, well, this is it guys. It looks pretty good, let me show you guys. Oh yeah, it looks really good, DSA Greenite. An amazing set in my opinion. This set was actually the first set that I have ever bought and by God it looks good. I really like the icons so you know the icons here so you have the four um, the four arrows you and you these three guys here these three guys here is you know they're pretty default like control uh, GUI and um, and alt now these guys here you can you know obviously you can program their stuff through QMK these guys here too generally uh, people use these ones here for macros and whatnot so really nice good looking stuff do you guys have uh, guys I really this is really what I had uh, I really want to wrap this up. If you guys have anything more, please tell me because this is quite it. Uh, it is flashed. So, uh, João, I did flash it with um, the default Tada key map. Uh, so, uh, you will have to look it up on how to program it and how to, you know, that kind of stuff. It really takes some a while to learn, but not that hard to do. Mais, mais perguntas, no more questions. Como que eu programo as coisas, então? Você vai ter que dar uma lidinha. Tá? Você vai ter que ir no site do QMK, dar uma lida lá como é que faz. Tem uns tutoriais, tem vários tutoriais para fazer como é que faz, mas você vai ter que dar uma olhadinha lá. É, você vai ter que baixar um programinha ou outro, nada especial. Você vai ter, ter que aprender a programar um pouquinho. Tem várias teclas, tem macros que você pode definir. Então, você joga. Então, imagina que você consiga usar macros e tal. Consegue dar uma olhadinha lá e ver como é que faz. Uh, existe board com SDK liberado para suporte com Aurora? 
Um, o Aurora está tentando adicionar suporte ao QMQ e eu não estou certo. É, eu não sei até onde eles estão conseguindo. O problema do QMQ é que tem os mais variados layouts possíveis, tem um monte de coisa zoada. É, então é muito difícil você colocar isso numa tela, sabe? É, eu não sei como que, como que tá, mas da última vez que eu chequei, faz uns meses isso já, não, 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 não tinha suporte para a QMQ ainda. Pobre do XP branco está perguntando há um tempão. Desculpa, cara, é que eu não... é, é muita, muita coisa no chat, eu não consigo ver. Uma coisa que ficou muito legal aqui, que eu sempre tenho muito orgulho, são os stabs. Cara, os stabs ficaram muito bons, se liguem. So I, I said that I really take pride in my stabs because they sound amazing, no rattling, awesome. Uh, vocês podem ver que não tem aquele som metálico daquelas. Uh, isso aqui, isso aqui é sem lubal. Tá vendo? Dá pra ver que tem bastante som do metal. Aqui não. Não consegue ouvir esse som de metal, então fica um sonzinho. Delícia. É incomum, LED em custom tem isso também. É incomum. O TADA tem, dá pra instalar os LEDs no TADA. É, mas tem muitas PCBs que nem suporte pra LED tem. É bem comum. Porque não adianta você comprar um puta Q7 caro pra caramba pra ter um monte de luz na cara. Não consegui ver o Q7. Sabe? E o, e o case do TADA não suporta layout ISO direto? Eu não sei. Eu acho que a PCB do TADA suporta ISO, sim. Tem que dar uma olhadinha lá no, no site deles. Eu não tenho certeza mesmo. Se não me engano, o firmware buga uma tecla. Mas já foi portado para QMK. E se não me engano, o QMK não buga. Agora eu preciso de outro teclado para programar esse? Não. Não. Esse teclado aqui eu já programei do jeito que está. Então ele está funcionando. Então você. Então você só precisa escrever o programa, compilar e subir para o controlador de teclado. É, você pode fazer isso com esse, porque ele já está programado. De novo, porque eu fiz. É, geralmente as PCBs não vêm programadas. Tá? Mas ele está com layout default. Você tem que ver qual que é o layout padrão do TADA. Tem lá na, na página de compra do TADA. Tem. Agora, falando sinceramente, é bom ter outro teclado caso você programe alguma coisa errada e você se ela sai errado, sabe? Você coloca uns Kimbytes errados. Então, é, é bom ter outro teclado para ajudar, mas não é preciso não, esse aqui está funcionando do jeito que está. Mais, mais perguntas, mais perguntas, more questions, guys. The sound box, box switches, they have this. Custo total desse KB. Uh, foi 460 reais, se eu não me engano. Eu estou cobrando 100 de mão de obra, tá? E as keycaps 400. É o que saiu esse, esse teclado. Você vê que a keycap é cara, né? Um, você, você consegue sets de keycaps mais baratos. No próprio site da KBD Fans tem um set de keycaps barato, legal, dá para usar também. Um, que você compra lá por, sei lá. 70 reais. É, então eu diria que com uns 500 então, você consegue fazer um teclado desse aqui. Montando. Se você contratar alguém para montar de novo. Eu cobrei 100 anos, né? Eu, eu tô fazendo esse teclado agora desde as 6 horas da tarde. Na verdade, desde antes, porque eu programei, programei e testei as peças antes de montar. Né? Não ia descobrir que você tava não funcionando na hora da, da stream. Então eu tô em cima disso aqui desde tipo 5 e meia. Então deu umas 3, 4 horas de trabalho aí. É, então esses 100 reais não é exatamente tão caro quanto parece. Mas é, é, com 500 então, você consegue montar. Você consegue montar assim. Tem risco de programar algo errado? Olha, tem, tem mas é, mesmo que você programe errado, você pode apagar e programar de volta. Então, dificilmente. Bricar uma PCB de um teclado é muito difícil. Complicadíssimo. Complicadíssimo, muito difícil. Vocês 
100 reais para mão de obra tá de graça. É, na verdade assim, só de material eu gasto 30 aqui. Tipo, é, com o lubrificante, a solda, energia e tudo. Então assim, de, de, digamos, lucro entre aspas, que sai para mim é tipo 50. Então é, é isso aí. Barato tirando essas keycaps. É, as keycaps são premium, tá? Uh, são originais, signature plastics. Uh, Uh, não tem muito o que falar, são keycaps de muita qualidade, são keycaps de fato high-end é, então custa caro ainda mais porque elas são importadas aliás, 400 reais é o preço de custo custa 100 dólares o kit, agora se você for ver é, é, para trazer mais frete, não sei o que custa mais, então na verdade eu tô, eu tô, eu tô, eu tô perdendo dinheiro nessas keycaps aqui para falar bem sinceramente Agora uma dúvida. No meu teclado antigo eu utilizava macros no E para jogar Fortnite. Dá para configurar elas? Dá, dá. Você tem que olhar no. Você tem que olhar no, no site do QMK lá, como é que programa certinho. Cara, é completamente livre, você pode, você pode colocar qualquer tecla em qualquer lugar, literalmente. Você pode trocar as teclas de lugar. Um, essas quatro teclinhas do canto aqui, você pode colocar o comando que você quiser nelas. Uh, cara, é show de bola isso aqui. As duais são da empresa que virou SP. Tô ligado, tô ligado. Você tá no Brasil? Se for o caso, precisar de manutenção, você faz esse tipo de serviço? Cara, a princípio não. Depende do que você quiser. Dá um oi lá. Vamos ver o que você precisa. Dá uma olhada. Beleza, galera? Bom, eu vou fechando por aqui. Eu tenho um compromisso agora. Eu já passou da hora, na verdade. Mas é, o, que, o que vocês precisarem, dá um oi lá. Belezinha? Falou, boa noite, João. Vamos combinar de você pegar isso aí amanhã. Uh, sexta de manhã eu vou viajar, então eu só volto semana que vem. Então se eu não for amanhã, só semana que vem daí. Beleza? Então me dá um oi lá e vamos combinar isso aí. Beleza? Top. Falou, meus queridos. Até depois. Streama mais quando der. É, mas ninguém me manda teclado pra montar, cacete. <risos>